Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everybody, welcome back. Uh, now, uh, before we go into this, just let us recapitulate from previous class this uh, different kind of uh, reactions. Okay? So, this NR, R is a uh, kind of a generalized um, uh, uh, hydrocarbon. Okay? So, we said that yes, uh, first what happens is that there must be an initiation reaction. So, this uh, uh, CH3, 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 uh, CH3, CH2, CH3 which is represented by this NR uh, uh, or the CH3, CH3 which is an ethane uh, goes to um, basically this uh, form this uh, first intermediate that is C. C is nothing but a chain carrier or a radical, okay, an active radical. So, then first step is production of this chain carrier. Okay. So, NR breaks it reacts with uh, something or uh, third body collision like that or, or a second body collision as such here and then it uh, uh, gives up this uh, makes this uh, uh, this intermediate C. So, R then can again react with C and form this A C. A and A C here is written in a generalized sense. So, this C as I said before that C can be H and uh, uh, this this C can be H, O H, etcetera. So, but this essentially means that there is a multiplication of this chain carriers, and then it forms a P, and then there can be gas termination and wall termination. Okay. So, uh, what we were trying to say is that that this chain branching is a very critical step. So, whether a mixture is explosive, that means whether you st start from a given initial temperature and pressure whether and you keep it at, a, at a, that initial temperature and pressure whether that mixture will spontaneously react and the temperature will continue to rise quickly uh, and because of uh, quick generation of energy because of fast generation of energy that is that is the explosiveness. Now, whether that is going to happen or not that is governed by this chain branching uh, cycle okay. and this one chain branching means one C gives rise to more than one C. Okay, a is a greater than 1 number. Okay. It can be 2, uh, typically it is uh, 2 uh, or something like that. So, then, but then the thing is that it is competing with this termination reaction also. Once you produce C, this it is not guaranteed that C will go and uh, attack R to form uh, subsequent reactions. C might be rendered uh, inactive by this R species uh, by gas termination or by wall termination. So, essentially we need to find out what are the conditions under which this reaction can compete with these reactions and which can lead to effective chain branchings. So, then we did this thing we found out the, the, the concentration rate of change of concentration of C and, uh, uh, and uh, using uh, this we found out that, uh, mm, that, uh, that we can uh, arrive at a generalized expression for DC DT. And then we arrived uh, found that uh, this DC DT has is expected a kind of a can give out some kind of an exponential type of behavior with uh, the C can have a, a behavior like this in time is equal to uh, something some constant uh, K uh, or, or some constant uh, which is uh, let us say some constant B times E to the power of uh, plus A minus A C times T. Now, so then uh, this A minus A C would determine um, whether this uh, whether this if this is A minus A C is positive then of course, then C can rapidly rise because we know that exponentials uh, lead to uh, uh, lead to a rapid uh, increase whereas, if A minus A C is positive then C will really decay. So, that criteria as we remember was given by uh, uh, with A minus A C and we found that that A minus A C is uh, uh, greater than 0 when the temperature and pressure when the temperature is large and the of course, uh, but when the pressure is at an intermediate level uh, that is uh, very large pressure or very small pressure is not conducive for explosion. Okay. So, this is what we did for a generalized case. Now, we go into the oxidation of hydrogen. We find we consider a hydrogen air mixture and we see we try to understand under what conditions uh, 
uh, hydrogen is explosive. Now, as you understand, this is very important because, uh, of course, the hydrogen because it's a very small molecule, it can diffuse very very quickly, and then it has got a very large range over which it can um, uh, it can basically uh, form uh, quicker uh, reactions. It is combustible. So. Um, under what conditions hydrogen is explosive that is very very important from a practical point of view also. Now, if we do the detailed analysis or if we do an experiment we will find that the it is not even uh, what what we previously said for a given hydrocarbon uh, it is um, uh, it is not that simple instead it instead of this uh, two branch behavior it shows a three kind of behavior which is called the z curve or the z curve ok. So, here we see that the most interesting behavior of hydrogen um, uh, explosion is that hydrogen air, 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 air uh, hydrogen um, uh, oxidation or the hydrogen air explosion limit is that that if you start at a given temperature say 750 Kelvin first up to certain pressure at and you start from a low pressure of course, at low pressure it is uh, are well understood that this mixture is non explosive ok because uh, whatever you uh, there is simply not enough collisions happening. All right. So, then after that if you go then it becomes explosive ok in these regions then it becomes non explosive again and then it becomes explosive again ok. So, it is a strongly non monotonic uh, behavior that you see all right. So, what controls this behavior? For that we need to go into under to understand the oxidation the reaction mechanism of hydrogen air mixtures. So, this up to this is essentially the the mechanism the reaction mechanism of hydrogen um, oxygen oxidation and as you have as we have discussed in last class that it essentially involves uh, uh, 9 species and 19 reactions ok. So, these are all the reactions. So, we will study this in details to understand what controls this explosive behavior. This uh, z curve with this limits of explosion and non explosion. So, first thing we have to understand is that how is hydrogen oxygen uh, reaction initiated? There are three possibilities. Hydrogen as you see that hydrogen can be attacked by a third body and it can split up into H radicals plus M. Of course, H radicals are very active. Oxygen can be split up by e another third body and it can split up into oxygen oxygen atoms and then the M. And then the third possibility is that the hydrogen oxygen itself can uh, can collide and form HO2 and H ok. Now, we have to understand that the activation energy of a dissociation reaction these are all dissociation reaction where hydrogen oxygen etcetera are dissociating is essentially proportional to the endothermicity ok. Then now, the endothermicity for these three reactions if we try to understand this is the for the first reaction it is 104 kilo calorie per mole for the second one is 118 kilo calorie per mole and for the third one is 55 kilo calorie per mole. Of course, because the endothermicity is small here um, the barrier to be crossed is the minimum and as a result of which uh, this uh, um, uh, and the uh, activation energy is uh, essentially the uh, minimum uh, because these endothermicity is the smallest. So, as a result this is typically the reaction by which hydrogen oxygen uh, combustion is initiated ok. So, by the formation of HO2. Now, then the most important thing to note here is that in the initiation reaction is that before we go into this is that when H2 and O2 react it forms HO2 and forms the H. This is the key here H is the key very key uh, radical in both hydrogen as well as in hydrocarbon combustion all right. So, um, we will uh, see that the next step what H does is nothing but H does H contributes to this branching reaction. So, H now once H is formed through the initiation reaction H reacts with O2 ok. So, H reacts with O2 to form O and OH, but this reaction is uh, endothermic and requires large energy to be initiated, initiated and is not favored at low temperature, but it needs as a result it needs high temperature ok. So, uh, as a result you see that 
at low temperature in this curve in this hydrogen oxygen explosion curve at when there is at these low temperatures there is no explosion. The reason is that for explosion to happen you need to have these branching reactions uh, happening okay? and this branching reaction does not happen at low temperatures because you can see here cl clearly from this thing itself that the H plus O2 O H plus O the activation energy is 16.44 kilocalorie per mole. Okay? So, it needs sufficient energy uh, but, uh, in, the, in the system for this uh, activation energy barrier to be crossed to form the H O, o, o and O H. So, that is as a result of this there is no explosion at low temperature okay? and of course, there is no explosion at low pressure because there is not sufficient uh, because these things are also this initiation also does not happen uh, because whenever H is formed it can just because it is if the if the pressure is low it is so dilute it does not uh, these, these are also short lived radicals it does not find another um, oxygen molecule to attack uh, and uh, it can just go and hit the wall and diffuse. So, there is essentially no reaction at uh, low pressure and this can be you have seen from the previous generalized um, uh, discussion of the of, of uh, explosion limits uh, when we discuss this NR goes to C etcetera this chain propagation uh, reaction etcetera. Okay. So, um, uh, this uh, as a result uh, at very low temperature and low pressure there is no reaction that is possible. Okay. And uh, then the other branching reactions are O and H2 goes to H and OH and OH plus H2 goes to H plus H2 and also there is this termination reaction which is very important this H plus O2 plus M goes to HO2 plus M. So, you see that while H that is formed from the initiation reaction can attack O2 and lead to this chain branching step this is the key chain um, uh, branching step there is also something happening parallelly that is H plus O2 in presence with the third body in the presence of a third body M can become this inactive radical HO2 plus M and as a result it can also reactions can also terminate. And you will see that is essentially the competition of these three chain branching reactions and or chain branching or chain carrying this is also this is chain branching uh, this is uh, chain branching this is chain carrying okay, because 1 OH uh, 1 OH gives rise to 1 radical H. Uh, it these three reactions these branching and carrying reactions essentially compete with the termination reaction H plus O2 plus M and that will determine whether the system is uh, explosive or not. Now, how do we do the analysis? So, another point to note is that this reverse reactions in this uh, um, be, between two radicals uh, the you see that we have given only forward signs that H plus O2 goes to OH and O, but the reverse reaction that is OH plus O going to H plus H plus O2 is not really favored because it involves collision between two radicals and this because the radicals itself are present in very low concentration. So, they are uh, they are uh, and they are also very energetic uh, also. So, they are colli their collisions uh, does not really result in the backward reaction okay. and also uh, this the, the reverse reaction of this is in this one is not favored because uh, at, uh, in at the time of ignition there is very low concentration of this product water which is formed during the later stages of oxidation. Okay. Uh, which concentration of which grows at uh, latest stage of oxidation. So, what we see is there is that uh, to summarize just what we discussed that at low pressure and temperature there is no explosion with addition of H and OH okay? because as we have said that branching step is not favored at low temperature and wall destruction of H and OH at low pressure uh, or less residence time. So, this is what we discussed that uh, this branching step is not favored at low temperature and H and OH even if they are formed at wall uh, at uh, low pressure they can just go to the wall and get destroyed all right. Now, what happens with increase in pressure uh, physically means that uh, it means that there is more frequent collision and more uh, reactions are facilitated. Okay. So, as a result of this the first explosion limit branching reaction becomes prominent uh, as the same reason why at low pressure reactions are not favored or uh, as you increase the temperature reactions are favored that uh, branching reactions become prominent and lead to explosion. But you remember that we have the 
termination reaction also. So, it is essentially this branching reactions has to compete with the termination reactions to determine the explosiveness or not. So, who wins under what we have to basically this uh, explosive or non explosive this tells us that uh, is in the second limit is essentially the, 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 the competition between the termination and the branching reactions and when it is explosive it is essentially the branching reaction is winning and when it is non explosive essentially this termination reaction is winning all right. So, uh, uh, for that uh, we uh, analyze the concentration the rate of change of concentration of H and as you know that H uh, we have seen that uh, these are the reactions that uh, contribute all of these reactions involve H 1, 2, 3 and 4. So, um, uh, here we see that uh, all these reactions K 1 is the first reaction K 2 is the first, third reaction K 3 is the third reaction and uh, K 2 is the second reaction K 3 is the third reaction K 9 is the Mm, your termination reaction. So, all this uh, you can write this DHDT as a uh, in terms of these things because all these reactions are contributing to this H um, uh, to the con change of concentration of H and uh, also we uh, analyze the rate of change of concentration of O because that is another important radical and that is contributed by two reactions K 1 and K 2 mm, and this uh, uh, this is the third reaction uh, where we try to analyze the uh, rate of change of concentration of OH and which is contributed by essentially three reactions ok. And uh, now we assume that the second two species O and uh, OH they are in uh, steady state there is a QSS assumption that we learnt in last class this is also another important thing we learnt. So, when you do that and when you basically substitute these things into this after applying for QSS what you can find that what you find is that you can write DHDT as 2 K 1 that is the reaction rate constant of the first reaction minus K 9 that is the reaction rate constant of the ninth reaction which is the termination reaction. You can validate from here that this is this is the first reaction which is the chain branching reaction H plus O 2 goes to O H plus O and this is the termination reaction H plus O 2 plus uh, plus M goes to O H O 2 plus M. And so, the DHDT is essentially a constant uh, is uh, given by 2 K 1 minus K 9 times M ok times the concentration of the third body itself which comes from the, uh, the termination reaction times H and O 2 ok. Now, let us just uh, we can uh, this is also essentially means that it is 2 omega 1 minus omega 9 which is the rate con rate reaction rate of the first reaction minus the reaction rate of ninth reaction. So, you see that what this is exactly the similar form of DC DT is equal to uh, something uh, some constant A minus AC times uh, times C uh, times some other things that we saw previously in the generalized discussion. So, here this this thing uh, DH DT is equal to once again some constant B times H and O 2 this will give have an exponential form and the sign of the exponent of the exponent of, the of e to the power of something the sign of that something will tell you whether this system will explode or not. So, that is why the sign of b is very important. So, what is b? b is nothing but 2 k 1 minus k 9 ok and we can say that the system explodes if 2 k 1 minus k 9 times m uh, is greater than 0. Uh, you understand where it comes from? that if we just uh, remove this mm. if we solve for this what we will get is that d ln h if we solve for this uh, this thing now we will get is that is equal to right. So, uh, it has a it will show kind of an explosive behavior of course, there will be some uh, b b b there will be d b this function of O 2 also coming in, but let us not consider that uh, b uh, we can say that this this thing becomes uh, explosive H will be essentially some we can write it as something like uh, e to the power of 2 k 1 minus k 9 uh, times. Uh, t ok. 
there will be some other things and also the, the there will be change of uh, rate of change of oxygen but uh, on average this is the thing that the system will explode if 2 k 1 minus k 9 times m sorry here m is there. Okay, so, 2 k 1 minus k 9 times m is greater than 0. Now, m is essentially a third body and the concentration of m depends on the cons on the essentially the pressure. So, we can say that we can replace uh, uh, we can write the ideal gas equation of state P is equal to essentially um, m r t and uh, under the limiting condition we can just substitute this m we can substitute P by r 0 t into here and we find is that we, we essentially find that P is equal to 2 k 1 by k 9 times r 0 t which is this thing. And we find that P is essentially a linear function of temperature and uh, as a result of the, uh, and because of this linearity you get this the second explosion limit to be nearly linear. So, this is the reason why it is linear like this why pressure and temperature are proportional. It essentially means you see what you what, what it means is that it essentially means that when twice of the first chain branching reaction is equal to k 9 times m. Okay, so, it is essentially a competition between the most important chain branching reaction and the termination reaction. So, when these two are at essentially equal rate that gives if on this side essentially k 9 is winning and on this side k 1 is winning and as a result of which this uh, this this side is non explosive and this side is explosive all right so this is the uh, clearly the the second limit uh, express uh, ex, ex, it explains the uh, second limit the third limit is that as we have seen that ho2 the formation of ho2 uh, here uh, is or we call it termination because when the when the when the temperature and uh, uh, for example we have seen that ho2 is uh, 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 here uh, in the termination reaction H O 2 is essentially formed. So, um, uh, this is the formed and H O 2 is essentially a uh, rather inactive radical uh, under low temperature and pressure conditions because it can uh, it does not do much uh, and uh, it essentially diffuses to the walls and becomes inactive. But when you raise the pressure okay, what can happen is that uh, as the concentration of H O 2 increases the H O 2 can essentially react with H 2 and then it can form H 2 O 2 plus H. So, once again you when as soon as you form H which is a very very active radical you can go to the chain branching step where H plus O 2 once again goes to O H plus O and also of course, uh, this H 2 O 2 the hydrogen peroxide can react with M to form O H O H and M this is uh, chain branching reaction. So, these chain branching reactions can now take over and as a result of this as uh, the concentration of as you increase the pressure you uh, once again from explosive it becomes uh, from uh, from inexplosive uh, it becomes um, explosive. So, that is why uh, even with increasing pressure even with the promotion of this uh, termination reaction it becomes explosive because now the H O 2 radical is formed as soon as this is crossed now this H O 2 radical essentially gives rise to chain branching reactions. Okay. So, this chain branching reactions that are being formed uh, actually uh, makes the system explosive again. So, that explains this uh, very unique uh, shape of this uh, z curve um, uh, here. Uh, so, uh, um, and uh, as a result and also as high temperature more and more radicals are produced and leading to radical radical reactions as you see that H O 2 plus H O 2 can also become H 2 O 2 plus O 2 and H 2 O 2 plus M goes to H plus O H plus M. So, this is the thing okay. and also that uh, H O 2 plus H goes can become a O H plus O H and H O 2 can also uh, react with O to become O H. At, uh, so, um, now uh, what what the means is that at high temperature and pressure H 9 is part of a reaction chain propagation process and thus explosion is always will always occur. Okay. So, uh, to summarize uh, if I can uh, uh, let me just summarize this thing um, in terms of uh, in terms of what we have learnt. That is uh, this was the, the thing we were discussing about. Uh, So, this uh, explosion of hydrogen and oxygen. So, here what happens here is that 
at uh, low temperature and pressure, uh, the key, key reactions mm, are of course the initiation reaction that is uh, when uh, uh, H2 plus O2 uh, becomes mm, HO2 plus H as we have seen here. Okay. H2 plus O2 becomes OH plus H2 plus H. So, uh, I am just uh, summarizing here. Uh, so, this is the most important uh, initiation reaction because of its low endothermicity. All right. Now, once H is formed, you can have chain branching reactions where H plus O2 goes to OH plus O. And there can be other two other chain branching also which you see that these are the other chain branching this this one and this one. Okay. Uh, um, uh, these are the different chain branching reactions uh, this uh, which you can have. Okay. The, but also there is simultaneously there is competition from the termination reaction. Okay. Uh, H plus O2 plus M becomes HO2 plus M. And termination become termination means the chain carrier becomes inactivated. Okay. So, in the when the temperature and pressure is when the temperature is low that is in this regime there is no reaction happening because even if there is initiation reaction this reaction which is the most important uh, um, most important reaction in, uh, in uh, combustion H plus O2 going to OH plus O this does not happen because this needs high temperature. So, in this reaction it is there is no reaction that is happening this is non explosive. Okay. But now, as you increase uh, and of course, there at, at low pressure, uh, there is also uh, there is also no uh, reaction uh, because uh, uh, because um, you see uh, the uh, wall destruction of H and OH at low pressure or at low residence times. So, when the pressure is low as we have discussed that um, that there is too less number of collisions happening and uh, this uh, this H radical which is being formed from the initiation reaction just flies away into the walls before it hits another uh, like an oxygen molecule and it uh, can just uh, deactivate. So, in this case there is it is there is no explosion. Okay. Now, as we increase the pressure of course, uh, this uh, now this uh, H can now attack O2 and this can lead to chain branching and reaction can happen. Okay. But once happens is that as you increase it uh, the pressure then this uh, termination reaction H plus O2 plus M uh, become going to HO2 plus M uh, this starts and these basically instead of H going into this chain branching step H plus O2 going to OH, OH plus O these takes away the, uh, the H atom and it uh, makes this deactivated HO2. Okay. Um, I'll just write it more clearly. It makes this more uh, deactivated HO2 instead of this chain branching step. So, and we see that uh, then uh, uh, and it is between the competition of this three chain branching reaction 1, 2 and 3 this competes with this K9 uh, which is HO2 plus H plus O2 plus M going to HO2 plus M and that basically uh, deactivates the um, uh, makes us makes the whole system non explosive. So, as a result of this at high pressure because of the dominance of this reaction at higher pressure this becomes non explosive. So, we go through this limit. Okay. But then again uh, what happens is that at even higher pressure this deactivated HO2 can now basically react with a third body and or it can react with other things and that can lead to chain branching reactions. So, at very high pressure uh, that uh, in this limit you see that this again becomes explosive. So, these uh, uh, can explain the summarizes the, uh, the, the different the three different limits of, of, um, uh, of, of uh, hydrogen oxygen um, oxidation and uh, the, the z curve of hydrogen oxygen explosion. But this is very important as you see because it determines that under which condition hydrogen oxygen mixture can be explosive and under which condition it will become inexplosive. And it is this explosive in explosive state it was once again as you see that one can never predict this using the global one step reaction mechanisms or uh, global one step reactions you need the details of this chain initiation, chain branching, chain termination and uh, the competition between the chain branching and the chain termination to understand when it is explosive and when it is non explosive. Okay. 
So, uh, what, and to discuss a little bit about the, um, uh, the about this hydrogen oxygen mechanisms, you see that this hydrogen oxygen mechanism is uh, done in a very organized manner, uh, where the first four reactions essentially represents the the chain uh, branching reactions, and uh, and the from 5 to 8 it represents the hydrogen oxygen dissociation reactions uh, and then uh, from uh, 9 to 13 it essentially introduces the hydroperoxyl chemistry okay and uh, then it introduces from 14 to 19 we have this hydrogen peroxide chemistry the rest is c oxidation which will come in a in a short while now one important thing is that you see that in certain cases you have got negative activation energy okay um, and this one uh, like uh, this one etc. So, it means that uh, radical this involves essentially this uh, uh, um, uh, this uh, uh, this is essentially this one this involves this essentially the radical radical collision. So, it means that uh, the radical radical collision is promoted in a low temperature state that is you do not even need more energy if you provide more energy the reactions are not promoted rather prohibited because uh, radicals itself contain a lot of energy. So, when you even energize them to uh, they do the reaction simply does not happen because they are too energetic when they collide they just simply fly away without any reactions or change of electronic structure happening. So, that is that is what explains the negative activation energy and uh, it is uh, the radical radical collision. Okay. Uh, also, there are like two uh, for example, in 14 you have this uh, two two uh, two uh, different values of this uh, pre exponential factor B and this uh, and this um, uh, activation energy which means that there are two temperature or two routes for low and high temperatures. Okay. So, if, uh, in the following uh, uh, we will go into the oxidation of uh, carbon monoxide and, uh, uh, and uh, as you have seen that uh, uh, that uh, in carbon monoxide oxidation is involved is actually included in the oxidation uh, in the reaction of uh, in the in the reaction mechanism of hydrogen oxygen com uh, combustion. Okay. So, uh, now what uh, what we need to understand is that this direct oxidation of carbon monoxide to carbon dioxide that is CO plus O2 going to CO2 plus O this is really relevant this does not happen. Okay. Now, because the reason is that there is a very high activation energy of 48 8 kilocalorie per mole involved and this oxygen atom that is formed does not really go into form any branching reaction. Uh, the chain branching reactions does not happen and if chain branching does not happen you see that there is no uh, very rapid uh, reaction happening and uh, then this is as a result this dry oxidation that is uh, in which is uh, this oxidation of carbon monoxide in absence of moisture is not really promoted this does not happen. The dominant oxidation route is essentially the CO plus OH going to CO2 plus H and this is also this another very very important reaction in hydrocarbon combustion and you will see that these reactions that H plus O2 going to OH plus O and the CO plus OH going to CO2 plus H these two are the two most important reactions involved in hydrocarbon combustion. And uh, no matter what the fuel is you will see that these come up uh, very often and essentially they uh, come and, um, uh, and always form the major chain branching step and this essentially forms the major heat release step of uh, this, uh, uh, this CO plus OH going to CO2 plus H. And here uh, as you see that this is integrated into the hydrogen, hydrogen oxygen chain and uh, the reason is that, uh, that uh, mm, whenever there is a, a little bit of hydrogen present in the system. Uh, these hydrogen uh, can form uh, this OH through the chain branching step H plus O2 going to OH plus O and this OH essentially reacts with CO and forms this CO2 plus H. And uh, as a result uh, the, and also water whenever there is water also then this reaction comes and as a result this CO oxidation becomes very very sensitive to moisture contents because the CO oxidation does not happen in a dry state through this reaction rather it happens in through this OH uh, through this um, OH into the CO plus OH going to CO2 plus H. Okay. So, uh, this is the uh, most important uh, re reaction involving uh, CO2 and you can see here that uh, this is the reaction this CO3 the CO plus OH going to CO2 plus H okay. and uh, which is actually and which happens in a very spontaneous manner you see the activation energy is also nearly 0 almost. Okay. So, uh, now uh, 
the initiation reactions you have to understand one thing that is uh, in a homogeneous system whatever we have described so far I have already told you a little bit about the difference between homogeneous systems and like in actual systems like flames etc. In a shock tube uh, flow reactor or a, uh, uh, this uh, ignition uh, 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 delay uh, calculation uh, this ignition delay uh, experimental setups now, there is no diffusive transport. So, when you measure ignition delay actually there is no diffusive transport that is a very very important thing. So, only you have a balance of this uh, only this uh, DC DT is essentially equal to your um, the stoichiometric coefficients times the reaction rate ok. So, there is no diffusion involved. So, when there is no diffusion involved it is only pro progresses in one, one direction of that is in the direction of time ok. So, the radicals that are generated ok th when they are consumed they have no way of coming back ok. Now, this might sound strange that is uh, th so the initiation reaction in this one is H plus H 2 plus O 2 is H O 2 plus H. However, in a flame say for example, in a practical combustion where you have a flame the radical are, are produced in the high temperature regimes, but this because of diffusion the radicals can back diffuse with and react with the incoming reactants. And as a result the initiation reaction for a uh, of course, after splitting the fuel the initiation reactions in actual flame is essentially H plus O 2 going to O H plus O. And as a result it has a different uh, global activation energy for if you consider a homogeneous system versus a diffusive system. So, this is the initiation reaction of choice H plus O 2 going to H plus O in a flame whereas, this is the reaction uh, for H 2 plus O 2 whereas, H O 2 plus H in a, in a flame. Of course, the detailed reaction mechanisms are same, but the we say that the chemistry is different for a homogeneous system versus the chemistry is different for a diffusive system in that the relative importance of the reactions in these kinds of things like initiation etcetera these becomes different when you have this radicals back diffusing and reacting with the species of the incoming reactants. So, this is what uh, what is the major difference between a homogeneous system when you calculate uh, which involves like ignition delay what happens in a shock tubes etcetera versus what you have in a flame ok. So, that is the uh, uh, thing here and uh, we will take a short break and when we join we will go into uh, uh, oxidation of methane. Thank you.